Today, when I was wondering about my future waifu in the morning shower, out of nowhere, a thought just clicked into my mind. What would happen if all of the current Hashiras used sun breathing? And the follow-up thought was how easy would it become for them to cut off Muzan's head? But when I dug deeper into it, I realized that Muzan is one of the most cunning villains of the whole anime. And after already being almost executed by Yorichi, who was the first sun breather, I don't think he will let this happen again with much ease. So I sat in front of my laptop and began my research on it. And the conclusions I've come to will literally blow your mind. So stick around till the end. So before we begin with the main storyline, there are a few things that we need to keep in mind. In this version of Demon Slayer, the big guy Gyomei will have a giant muscular Nichirin sword in place of his spiked flail and axe. But our flashy ninja Tengen Uzui will continue the sun breathing with his sparkling pair of blades. Also, he won't be retiring after his battle with the Upper Moon Six and won't even lose his hand during the fight. Rather, we would assume that he got multiple fractures, which he recovered from with time. And lastly, the flame Hashira Kyojiro also managed to survive until dawn with the assistance of Inosuke and Zenitsu. So, let's begin. We'll begin directly from the current arc, the Swordsmith's Village arc. Because in this arc, we witness Tanjiro using the Hinokami Kagura, or Sun Breathing, imitating Yorichi's mark and swordplay. Undoubtedly, this was a jaw-dropping moment not only for us viewers, but also for the demons themselves. I mean, just look at how astonished their faces were while having their heads cut off. So the moment Tanjiro used the Dragon Sun Halo Head Dance and beheaded Sekido, Karaku, and Aizetsu in a seamless flow, Mitsuri arrived at that precise moment and witnessed the entire scene, which put her in a tense state because up until this point, she, along with the other eight Hashiras, believed that sun breathing was an exclusive art known solely by the Hashiras. However, her moment lost in thought is soon disrupted by the appearance of Zohakuten, who diverts her attention and forces her to engage in the fight. But throughout the fight, these questions tickled her mind. How can a Kanai-ranked Demon Slayer use sun breathing? Does he possess something special in him, or does he have a connection to sun breathing? Mitsuri, look behind you! Look behind! Tanjiro's call snaps her back into focus, prompting her to swiftly dodge an incoming attack. She forgets everything and charges towards Zohakuten in full rage. Sun breathing, 10th form, fire wheel. Using this technique, she maneuvers behind Zohakuten, executing a deceptive fire wheel with her ribbon sword which distracts Zohakuten, causing him to panic and desperately summoning the woods to save himself. Meanwhile, Tanjiro, Ginya, and Nezuko sniffed out the main body of Hantengu, concealed within that wooden ball kind of thing. Tanjiro instructs Nezuko to employ her blood demon art to ignite the ball while positioning himself to swiftly slit Hantengu's neck the moment he pops out of that ball. Nezuko followed through, and it happened the same. Hantengu jumps out in fear and terror, and with Tanjiro poised and ready, it took no time for him to behead Hantengu. Also, in another corner of the village, Muichido wiped out Gyoko with much ease this time, his sun breathing prowess making the encounter even more straightforward. After two weeks since their return from the village, Master Kaguya summons everyone for a meeting with Tanjiro and Mitsuri, who are already present and engaged in a discussion regarding how Tanjiro can use sun breathing despite not being a Hashira. During their conversation, Tanjiro reveals that his father, Tanjiro, used to perform the Hinokami Kagura dance, which consists of 12 forms dedicated to the fire god throughout the entire night on the last night of the year, in order to protect the family from diseases and threats. And my father learned this dance from my grandfather. Mitsuri is astounded after hearing this. So, was the first sun breather your ancestor? No, he wasn't, Master Kaguya interrupts. Then he explained that Tanjiro's ancestor named Sumiyoshi was a close friend of Yorichi, and Yorichi taught sun breathing to Sumiyoshi, who passed it down to his son, and this tradition continued through generations, with Tanjiro being one of his descendants. And after this, various other important matters were discussed, bringing the meeting to a close. Meanwhile, Muzan went into a frenzy after the silly defeat of Hantengu and Gyoko, and decided to finish off the entire Demon Slayer 4 once and for all. He wasted no time in reaching the Kageya Mansion, and he faces Sanemi and Tengen, as only they were present within the mansion. As soon as Sanemi sees Muzan, he takes no second and launches an attack without any hesitation. Sun breathing, sixth form, solar heat haze. As Sanemi is approaching Muzan, wielding the power of the sun's breath, 
Muzan experiences traumatic flashbacks of his encounter with Yorichi, a moment that nearly claimed his life. This made him shiver down to his bones, causing him not to be able to move out of terror. And as Sanemi is about to strike, Akaza intervenes and takes the blow. And in a split second, Nakime activates the Infinity Castle and transports them to alternate dimensions. Is this the purpose of my prolonged existence? Merely to die like this? These sun breathers are nowhere near Yorichi's level. Are these amateur insects truly capable of killing me? No. No, no, never! I shall never allow them to slay me. Not in the least. Muzan, full of rage, screams. I shall kill each and every one of them. No, you won't, unless you kill me first. Guess who enters? It's Lady Tamayo, who arrives in the nick of time and injects Muzan with the poison she prepared. In an attempt to overcome the poison and heal, Muzan forms a flesh clot around himself, but this turned the tables on him, as the clot became a poisonous cocoon, weakening the Demon King. Meanwhile, in another dimension within the Infinity Castle, Akaza has almost recovered from those severe cuts and has regenerated his arm. And at that very moment, suddenly, the door swings open. Ah, welcome, welcome. Last time we were having such fun before the sun rudely interrupted our show. Face it, you possess no courage to face me. You're just a coward who runs away from the battle like rats. But this time, I'll show you no mercy and finish what has remained unfinished for so long. Sun breathing, eighth form, sunflower thrust. Rengoku, fueled by relentless rage, launches an attack at Akaza, but Akaza swiftly dodges the attack. Ha <laughs> ha, splendid, truly splendid. You've become quite fast and sharp this time around. That time I was merely playing with all of you, but you know what, not this time. And with this, they engage in a one-on-one -on -one clash, a battle even more ferocious and destructive than before, as if they were bitter rivals. I mean, actually they are rivals, but it seems they've taken it to a personal level. Meanwhile, in another dimension, Doma revels in his feast when Shinobu, Mitsuri, and Obanai arrive. Shinobu wastes no time in attacking Doma, as the flames of vengeance ignited by the memory of her sister's untimely demise didn't even let her think for another second. She fights with the third form, Raging Sun, to finish off Doma once and for all. Yet it will not be that simple, as Doma swiftly disappears and evades the attack. With a mischievous and mocking grin adorning his face, he starts to taunt her, and in real time, the air within the room started getting denser and heavier, making it difficult for the Hashiras to breathe properly because this frenzy was gonna be intense. Other than this, the battle is going to be a formidable challenge for the Hashiras, especially Shinobu because she's lost her composure due to the immeasurable hatred and anger she possesses for Doma. And she took some serious blows from Doma, which ultimately made her too fragile to fight anymore. However, her furious assaults, combined with the efforts of Obanai and Mitsuri, managed to push Doma on the back foot by inflicting deep wounds that he cannot immediately regenerate from due to sun breathing. Back on the other side, Rengoku is reinforced with Giyu and Tanjiro. Exhausted and engaged in a grueling encounter with an upper moon demon on his own, Rengoku's efforts will have taken a toll. Akaza too got some serious damage from Rengoku, providing Tanjiro and Giyu with an advantageous situation. They seized the opportunity, believing it to be the perfect moment to bring Akaza to his demise. However, they failed to figure out the true extent of Akaza's capabilities, as he is no ordinary demon. Tanjiro and Giyu combine their sun breathing techniques and unleash their aggression upon Akaza, and Akaza uses his blood demon art to repel them, grabbing their katanas with his bare hands. This unforeseen turn of events catches Tanjiro and Giyu off guard, leaving them in a state of shock. However, Rengoku has anticipated this possibility and was prepared for such an opening. And gathering every ounce of his remaining strength, Rengoku stands up, unleashing his Demon Slayer mark with full potential. And using the fifth form, the Setting Sun transformation, he delivers a final blow to Akaza, swiftly beheading him and sealing his fate. Hence, Akaza is no more. However, after this heavy round, Rengoku is not even able to move, but he commands Giyu and Tanjiro to leave him behind and rush to assist the other Hashiras. Coming back to Doma, 
Shinobu's weakened state doesn't allow her to continue the battle, so she cleverly tricks Doma to consume her, setting a trap that begins to take effect, gradually weakening and immobilizing him. This paves the way for Mitsuri and Obanai to unleash a devastating combo of the sun-breathing techniques. Mitsuri performs the fire wheel, while Obanai simultaneously executes the dancing flash, and with their combined efforts, they swiftly ended Doma's demonic career. In all of this chaos, Kokushibo reaches the poisonous cocoon that trapped Muzan. Kokushibo slices open the cocoon, freeing Muzan. However, the job has already been done. Muzan has been infected with a potent poison that inhibits his full potential, gradually decreases his speed and accuracy, and ultimately weakens him. But still, he has Kokushibo by his side, who's nothing less than a nightmare for the Demon Slayers. Muzan has been freed, and the Kusagai Crows swiftly disseminated the information to all of the Hashiras. And without wasting a moment, Tanjiro, Giyu, Sanemi, and Tengen arrive at the scene as Mitsuri and Obanai are confronted by Nakime, and Muichiro gets interrupted by Kaigaku while they're on the way to the main ground. We'll let them engage in that battle while we return to the main climax, because this is gonna be some serious action to watch. So Giyu, Tanjiro, and Tengen face off against Kokushibo, while Sanemi directs his wrath toward Muzan, and this time, Muzan is prepared for their assault. Sanemi straight up goes with the sun-breathing 10th form, the Fire Wheel, but Muzan counters with a powerful strike, causing Sanemi to cough up blood. Sanemi, in his peculiar manner, says, Huh, this is gonna be quite enjoyable. Enraged, Muzan goes on a furious onslaught over Sanemi with his deadly spaghetti stings, inflicting severe wounds on him. Finally, Muzan delivers his final fatal blow upon Sanemi, but just in the nick of time, Gyome arrives, slicing through the spaghetti with his colossal Nichirin swords as if it were nothing. Muzan realizes that Gyome is a rare breed, a formidable adversary who's not easy to overcome. The trio of Tanjiro, Giyu, and Tengen went toe-to-toe -to, -toe to defeat Kokushibo, but Kokushibo, on the other hand, doesn't even feel like he was fighting. You insignificant brats are nowhere in comparison to my brother Yorichi. You are fools if you think any of you can pose a threat to me. Indeed, individually, we may not, but together, we can and we will. With this, Tanjiro uses the 11th form, the fake rainbow with unparalleled grace, creating bamboozling illusions and disrupting Kokushibo's movements. This creates an opening for Tengen and Giyu to overcome Kokushibo's overwhelming strength. Tengen swiftly severs Kokushibo's limbs with his dual blade by using Flame Dance, while Giyu uses the third form, Raging Sun, to cleave Kokushibo's body in two. And then Tanjiro comes up with the finishing blow with the sun-breathing first form, the Dancing Flash, and beheads Kokushibo. Meanwhile, Gyome and Sanemi manage to hold on to Muzan, and after beheading Kokushibo, Tanjiro and Uzui join them while Giyu rushes to assist Obanai, as he gets informed by the Kasugai crows that Mitsuri has passed away in the battle with Nakime. Ha! You pitiful humans! Your futile attempts to defy me are nothing short of amusing. Thanks for gathering up. You truly believe you can end my existence. See how helpless you all are, and with sheer fury, Muzan launches an onslaught against the Slayers with his poisonous spaghetti flailing through the air, and while dodging these lethal blows, Tanjiro spots a vulnerable opening and seizes the opportunity without hesitation. But slow your roll, Tanjiro. It's not gonna be that easy, my boy. Muzan swiftly turns and hits Tanjiro so hard that he immediately loses consciousness and faints. In the depths of his slumber, Tanjiro experiences a vision of Yorichi, and realizes that he can use the alterations of the sun-breathing forms to unleash their full potential. And with this, he suddenly wakes up and figures out that he is not in the optimal condition to perform this alone. So he decided to perform it with the other Hashiras, as a collective effort may yield even greater power than any individual could muster. He also realizes that they're not in the confines of the Infinity Castle anymore, which straight up means that Nakime is also dead. Tanjiro gazes upon Giyu, Obanai, and Muichiro lying dead, as Muzan has killed them off in the meantime. 
Also, he notices that Rengoku has arrived in the battle and that all the Hashiras are totally exhausted, but still standing on their feet, ready to fight Muzan till death. Tanjiro shouts that Muzan cannot be defeated like this, as they all have to attack simultaneously with all 12 forms of sun breathing. Everyone prepares themselves for the coordinated action, except Sanemi. Oh, Sanemi, this is a most ill-fated time to exhibit your superiority. Anyway, it took a moment for him to realize the necessity of coordinated efforts as he attacked alone with the 12th form, Flame Dance. Yet, before he can deliver another blow, Muzan severs his left arm with his razor-sharp spaghetti. Sanemi lost hope in victory with his severed limb, but our boy Tanjiro reignites the flame of vengeance within Sanemi with his motivational speech. Tanjiro implores Sanemi to maintain composure, as Muzan is a cunning demon who wants them to make mistakes. Tanjiro reminds him of the dead Hashiras as if they hold no value to him, and with renewed determination, Sanemi rises to his feet with unbreakable determination to kill Muzan. See how helpless these humans are? They truly believe they can slay me. Pathetic insects, all of you! Is there something you wish to convey with that distasteful, vile mouth of yours? Because you won't be able to after this. And with this, everyone stands up, with Muzan being in the center, surrounded by Rengoku, Tengen Uzui, Gyome, Sanemi, and Tanjiro. And at this very moment, Uzui, Gyome, and Sanemi unleashed their Demon Slayer marks, which made them feel the newfound strength within them. Muzan gets confused and terrified as he gazes upon their fearless stance, with their bodies battered and bruised, yet standing tall with their bright red swords tightly gripped, and glowing marks on their foreheads, all of them resembling Yorichi at once. Then, Tanjiro calls out, sun breathing, final form, the dawn. Tanjiro charges forward, initiating the attack with dancing flash. Sanemi follows up with his one-armed clear blue sky, while Tengen strikes Muzan with the third form, raging sun, wielding his dual blades. Rengoku proceeds with the setting sun transformation, and Gyome consecutively blows with the sunflower thrust and the flame dance. Continuing it, Tengen and Tanjiro simultaneously execute the 10th and 11th forms, the fake rainbow and the fire wheel respectively, along with Rengoku and Gyome unleashing the beneficent radiance and the dragon sun halo head dance. They unite their attacks upon Muzan, converging in a final and 13th form that targets every vital part of his body. Muzan's inability to divide due to Tamiyo's poison left him with no other option but to die. And with that final form, along with the effective poison of Lady Tamayo, he has gone forever. After all of this chaos, everyone faints, not even knowing if they were successful or not. But sadly, Sanemi passes away due to his severe injuries, having fought Muzan for the longest duration. After three weeks of recovery, Tanjiro regains consciousness, greeted by an atmosphere of celebration and jubilation. Beside his bed, Nezuko appears and says, You did it, brother! You did it! Tanjiro's tears flow uncontrollably, and he embraces her tightly. And thus, the story ends with happiness.